So we've been learning about all the different laws of physics. We've learned about the gravitational law of physics last term, and we've been learning about the electro, uh, electromagnetic laws of physics this term. And one of the things that's very difficult when you learn about all of these laws is getting an understanding of when they're important and whether or not they're important relative to each other. Particularly with electromagnetism, when we talk about electricity and magnetism, especially when we're learning it, we're talking about very microscopic systems, very microscopic particles, particles, electrons, protons, and stuff, and it's important to develop an intuitive sense for why electricity and magnetism is the most important force in these considerations. So let's just think about a hydrogen atom. So a hydrogen atom, uh, in its simplest uh, uh, form, can be considered an electron orbiting around a proton. Okay. Uh, the uh, hydrogen atom can come in different forms that have uh, multiple neutrons in its nucleus, but let's just consider the single proton case. And what I want to know is if I know the distance that the electron is away from the proton, what is the relative strength of the electrostatic, the Coulomb force, compared to the gravitational force? Okay, so that's a straightforward calculation that we can do. Let's do it um, uh, algebraically first, and then what you'll see is that lots of the uh, considerations in the algebraic formulation will cancel out and leave you with only a few numbers that you have to multiply or divide together to answer that question. Okay, so what we're interested in is the relative strength of the two forces. And whenever we talk about relative strength, the easiest way to do that is to form a ratio. So let's imagine a ratio that is the force given by Coulomb's law divided by the force given by the universal law of gravitation. Okay, now both of those have a very similar form. Coulomb's law is a constant, Coulomb's constant, times the magnitude of the charges involved, let's write them as Q1 and Q2, divided by the square of the separation between those two. The gravitational law has a very similar form. It also has a constant, the universal constant of gravitation, or Newton's constant. It is multiplied by the two masses in the problem, M1 and N2 and divided by the separation between the two masses. Now we talked about this in class, but it's worthwhile pointing out again. Both of these force laws look exceedingly similar to each other. Um, and so this is what ultimately is going to make this problem easy to do. Okay, so before I go too much farther, let's do some algebra. So this 1 over r squared in the numerator cancels with this 1 over r squared in the denominator. That makes our life a little bit easier. And all of this reduces to the ratio of the two constants, Coulomb's constant over Newton's constant, times the magnitudes of the two charges multiplied together, Q1, Q2, divided by the magnitude of the two masses multiplied together, M1, M2. Okay? So... Now, at this stage, I can just multiply all these numbers together. These two constants you can look up. The fundamental charge carried by both the proton and the electron is the elementary charge, E, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then you can look up the individual masses of the proton and the um, uh, electron. So putting those numbers in, coulombs constant is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Newton's constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared. See how those units are kind of similar? Per kilogram squared times the fractional ratio of the charges and the masses. So this is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs for the proton. And we took the absolute value in Coulomb's law. So if I was actually writing down the charge of the electron, I'd have a minus sign, but the absolute value gets rid of it. So this is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs for the electron without the minus sign because of the absolute value. And then the two masses, which you can look up, 
the mass of the proton is 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The mass of the electron is considerably smaller, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, so you can multiply those out. If you put them into your calculator, the constants here become 1.35 times 10 to the 20 kilogram squared per coulomb squared and then these ratios here become 1.68 times 10 to the 19 coulomb squared per kilogram squared. Okay, I like to go through this interstitial step uh, in order to make sure that all my units work out right. Um, unit tracking is one of the easiest things you can do to ensure that you're getting the right answer as you're doing calculations. So at this uh, step up here above, I had canceled out these Newton meter squareds because there's one above and one below so they cancel out. And this one over kilogram squared in the denominator combined with the 1 over coulomb squared in the numerator to give me this kilogram squared per coulomb squared. Over here I got coulomb squared per kilogram squared from this ratio and what you see is they cancel out leaving me with a dimensionless number which is exactly what I would expect from a ratio. Right? This is Wheeler's first moral principle, knowing the answer before you start. When I started I constructed a ratio of two forces. This should be newtons per newtons, which should be dimensionless by the time I get to the bottom. And indeed, that's where I find myself. So we're doing great. Okay, so I'm left with just two numbers, which I multiply together. And if I multiply them together, I get 2.26 times 10 to the 39. That means that the electrostatic force is hugely greater than gravity. What that means is that in all problems where we're simply considering the interactions of two charges in close proximity to each other, the electrostatic force is going to be the dominant force. We have said many times and we will continue to say that we're going to neglect the gravitational force because we can do a calculation like this. Always in any problem when you neglect a force it's your choice. You're making the judgment as the person solving the problem that it's not important. And if you ever doubt yourself, you can include it. But what you see is that when you get numbers like this, the ratio of the two is so dramatically different that even if you did include the gravitational force, it wouldn't make any difference to your problem. Okay? So good luck. We'll do some more problems soon. Have fun.